First, you need to add the PostgreSQL repository to your system. Open your browser and go to PostgreSQL.org and click on Download. Select Linux as your operating system and Red Hat as Linux distribution. Select version 15, then select Red Hat version 9 as your platform. Copy and paste the command to your primary and secondary servers to install the PostgreSQL repository. After adding the repository, you need to disable the built-in PostgreSQL module by running this command. This will ensure that DNF will not automatically upgrade PostgreSQL to a newer version, avoiding any potential compatibility issues with your application. After that, you can now install PostgreSQL 15 on both primary and secondary servers. Once the installation is complete, you need to initialize the database by running the initDB option. Note that you only need to run this on the primary server since the secondary server will replicate the data when you set up the replication. After the database has been initialized, you can start the PostgreSQL service and enable it to start automatically on boot. Note that you only need to do this on the primary server for now. Now that you have installed and configured the PostgreSQL server, let's move on to setting up asynchronous replication. Edit the PostgreSQL configuration file on the primary server to allow replication. Open the file PostgreSQL.conf and set the following values. Listen underscore addresses parameter specifies the IP addresses that the PostgreSQL server should listen on for incoming connections. By setting it to asterisk, the server will listen on all available network interfaces. If you want to restrict the server to listen on a specific IP address or set of addresses, you can specify them instead of asterisk. Wall underscore level parameter specifies the level of information that should be written to the wall or write ahead log. Setting it to replica means that the server should write enough information to support streaming replication to one or more standby servers. Max underscore wall underscore senders parameter specifies the maximum number of wall sender processes that the server should use to stream wall data to standby servers. In other words, it determines how many standby servers the server can support simultaneously. The actual number of active wall senders will depend on the number of standby servers that are currently connected. It is recommended to set this to the maximum number of standby servers you might possibly have. The wall underscore keep underscore size parameter was introduced in PostgreSQL 13 that specifies the amount of disk space, in megabytes, that should be reserved for write-ahead log segments that are needed by standby servers. It's important to note that setting wall keep size too high can lead to excessive disk space usage, while setting it too low can lead to standby servers falling behind and requiring a full resynchronization with the primary server. Hot underscore standby parameter enables hot standby mode on the server, which means that it can accept read-only connections from standby servers. In hot standby mode, the server allows standby servers to connect and execute read-only queries against the database. This is useful for offloading read traffic from the primary server and distributing it across multiple standby servers. Save and exit the configuration file. Next, you need to create a replication user on the primary server. To do this, log into the PostgreSQL shell by changing to the Postgres user and running the PSQL command. In the PSQL shell, you can create the replication user by running the following command. Create user replicator creates a new user account with the name replicator. The replicator account will be used to connect to the PostgreSQL server from the secondary server for replication purposes. The replication class specifies that the replicator user is intended for replication purposes and not for general database access. Login class specifies that the replicator user can be used for authentication when connecting to the PostgreSQL server. Encrypted password sets the password for the replicator user to a replicator underscore password. The password is encrypted using a one-way hashing algorithm, so it cannot be retrieved in plain text. Exit the PSQL shell by typing backslash Q. Next is to add a rule in the host-based authentication file to allow the replicator user to connect. Modify pg underscore hba.conf and add the following rule. This rule allows a PostgreSQL user named replicator to connect from a specific client host whose IP address is 192.168.100.75 which is in this case the IP of the secondary server, without requiring any password or other authentication. The replicator user is used for replication purposes, so this rule is configuring the access rights for our replication connection. Now save and exit. Exit from Postgres user and restart the PostgreSQL service to apply the changes. Next is to add a new rule to the firewall to allow incoming connections on PostgreSQL port 5432 by running the following firewall CMD command. Then reload the firewall service for the new rule to take effect. 
Now that you have created the replication user and configured the primary server, you can move on to configuring the secondary server. First, you need to apply the same firewall rule to the secondary server and reload firewall CMD. Change as Postgres user and run the pgbase backup command. This command connects to the primary server at IP address 192.168.100.72 using the username replicator and creates a base backup of the database cluster using plain text format. The backup is created using streaming replication with progress messages displayed during the backup process. The resulting backup includes all the files needed to start a replica server and the backup files are stored in the slash var slash lib slash pgsql slash 15 slash data. Exit as Postgres user and then execute systemctl command to start and enable on boot the Postgres SQL service on the secondary server. At this point, you have configured the secondary server and enabled asynchronous replication. To test the replication setup, insert some data into the primary database and verifying that it appears on the secondary server. If the replication is working correctly, the select statement should return the inserted row on both the primary and secondary servers. You can do additional testing by performing a write action from the secondary server. The result should be, cannot execute create table, as shown here. To verify the streaming status of a secondary server, you can use the pg underscore stat underscore replication view on the primary server, which provides information about the current replication status of each standby server. If the state column for a given secondary server shows streaming, this means that the replication connection is active and the secondary server is currently receiving wall data from the primary server. To view the status of the wall receiver process on a secondary server, you can use the following command. This information can be useful for monitoring the replication status and diagnosing issues that may be affecting replication. To perform a failover from a primary PostgreSQL server to a secondary server, you need to promote the secondary server by running the pg underscore ctl promote command as Postgres user. The pg underscore ctl promote command is used to initiate the failover process. It signals the standby server to take over as the new primary server and start accepting read-write connections. Before you can proceed with the failover, you need to enable the generation of wall log hints on the primary server. Wall log hints are used by the pg underscore rewind tool to ensure that a standby server is consistent with the primary server during a failover. To enable wall log hints, you can set the parameter in the PostgreSQL configuration file. Search for wall underscore log underscore hints, uncomment the parameter and change it to on. Save and exit. Then exit as Postgres user and restart Postgres SQL Server as root. Now shut down the primary Postgres SQL Server to mimic the service downtime. Also verify that the Postgres SQL Server is inactive by running the status command. On your secondary server, verify that it's still in a read-only state by running the following command. True means that the server is in recovery mode and is in a read-only state. Now run the promote command to promote your secondary server to become the new primary server. Once the server has completed the necessary checks and operations and has switched to read-write mode, you will see message done, followed by server promoted. This indicates that the secondary server has successfully been promoted to become the new primary server and is now ready to accept read and write requests. You can further verify this by checking if the server is in recovery mode. By this time, the command should return false. 